Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's talk about grunge effects in Photoshop and Premiere Pro. So I'm calling it an effect, but it really is a treatment of type or images. It's, it's the way to break something up and make it look grungy. Um, it used to be called distressed type, but uh, grunge is uh, much more familiar. I'm going to show you how we're, we're going to do this in Photoshop and in Premiere Pro. Now, when you're doing this in Photoshop, you're doing it to an image that you can really use anywhere. So you're not limited to only these two applications. Let's go have a look. So I've got some type here on a layer and it's just a regular type layer with a background. And I've got the background just so you can see the transparency that happens. Right now, this type layer has no mask. So I'm going to add a mask by clicking on this button, add a layer mask here. And when you add a layer mask, it shows up as pure white and nothing changes. You also can't see the layer mask. Um, you can see that it's selected, that type is selected here, when the layer mask is selected here. If you get a brush, just a regular brush, and we start painting with black, you can see that we're making the type disappear because we're painting on the layer mask. If we flip the color, so right now black is the front, if you tap the X key, you're now painting with white. And if we want to see that, hold the Alt key on Windows, Option on Mac, click on the mask, and now paint in the mask. So we're painting with black, we're painting with white, painting with black. That's how that works. So that whenever we're looking at the image and we're painting on the mask, we're either removing the, uh, the we're adding to the mask or removing from the mask. And you can see or hide the type. Pretty good, okay? So what we want to do is bring this image here into that mask. And this is a grayscale image. It's black and white, but there are gradations in here. You wanna make sure that you have um, a photographic image. You don't want hard edges on here. And this can be anything that you're bringing in as a black and white. And you could convert something to black and white by removing the saturation or file save as, or, or change the mode to grayscale. So you can make these on your own. I wanna show you that on Adobe Stock, if you do, if you search in images for grunge texture, you'll see a bunch of great high quality grunge textures that you can use. And some of them are vector, meaning that they're resizable and scalable. You can drop them in and scale them. If something is not vector and it's low resolution, uh, when you scale it up, so if this is like, let's say 640 by 480, and it's a tiny image, you could scale this up to HD or 4K, but the grunge texture will now be very soft, and you don't want that. Grunge needs to have hard, jagged edges to have that kind of a feel, but you could make this yourself. You could just take a piece of paper, scratch all over it, and then photograph it or scan it in. So I'll select this, select all and copy, and if you hold the alter option key and click on the mask, now we're looking on the mask, paste the image into our layer mask. And now when I click back on the type layer, you can see the type has got this distressed look. And this is still live. This is very live right there. I'm gonna go back to what I had there before. But this is a live texture that's going on. So if you want to flip this texture and make what's hiding what's showing and what's showing hiding, all you have to do is select that, hold the control key on Windows, the command key on Mac and hit I, which is invert. And what you're really doing is you're inverting this, that's all. You're just changing what is white is black and black is white. This is just an easy way if the texture is overall too dark and it's removing too much, you can flip it, uh, invert it. So we now have this live type and it's a live texture. You've got control of where this grungy texture happens and you can in, make sure that the, not the type is selected, make sure the layer mask is selected and in filter go to other offset and here you can offset where that texture is showing with preview on. And when I click OK, it's now moved the texture. One thing to be careful about, I'm gonna go back to that texture and we don't see it here, but sometimes when you're moving that texture along, it's not, if it, this isn't a seamless texture, meaning that as I move it, there might be a line 
and you can just use the regular rubber stamp tool to, to fix that up. So just keep that in mind if you're offsetting that texture. And you would offset that texture because maybe some of the, the, uh, the grunge effect is happening on an important part of the image or the type or the effect or the logo that you're working on. So instead of removing everything, you could just move that down. Okay, so that's in Photoshop. And at this point, um, I could throw away the background because remember, I just have the background in here so you can see the transparency. And then I could export this out as a PNG file, a ping file, portable network graphics. And I could put that into anything that I want that has transparent. That where I wanted this type to be transparent, but you have to be careful because if it's a ping, it's not a uh, type anymore. So if you resize it, it could get soft and, and kind of blurry. But why not live in a full Adobe world? Just leave this as a .psd file, a Photoshop file, which I can use in any Adobe application. And if I wanted to, I could come back into Photoshop, change the layer mask, change the distressing, the, the grunge, change what the word is saying, very easy. Now, one thing before we, we leave Photoshop, I wanna show you that there are typefaces. I'm gonna delete that. I'll show you that there are typefaces that actually have that kind of effect. And one of them is Salvation. So th this has no layer mask. This is part of the type. And if we go to fonts, Dot adobe.com, part of your um, Creative Cloud account gives you these fonts. And there are a number of typefaces like Battery Park and Salvation that already have that distressed look in them. I think they look pretty darn cool. I love that broken up look. So here you don't have to use a mask to get rid of that. So I like that, but there's one slight issue for type nerds like me. If you notice the letter G occurs twice in here and it's the same character each time. So I can see that tiny little dot in there. Most people are not gonna notice this, but if you're a type nerd like me, you actually see things like that. And uh, inside your head, you, you, you think, oh, uh, I wish that was different. Well, guess what? This particular typeface, which is Salvation, actually has extra letters in it, extra characters called open type glyphs. So the designer of the font needs to make these, but I'll show you how easy it is to change them. I'll grab the type tool, I'll click on that second letter G and drag, and you'll notice a glyph panel comes up so I can change that, that G. Oh, what about the E? The E is also repeated, and now I can change that E. So the Gs are different, the Es are different. This looks more accurate, more organic, because when we put that texture in the background, it's completely organic and different in every single character. So when you use a font that doesn't have open type glyphs in it, then it's going to look that, that way. It's gonna look exactly the same if you have repeating characters. If you don't, then don't worry. So that's two ways to do it. We can do it with um, a typeface that is already uh, grungy and, and distressed, or we can use a layer mask. Let's go have a look in Premiere Pro. So on the top track, track V4, I brought in the same texture. So the same grunge texture is there. I'll just turn that off for a second. The next track is the type that I'm using. That's my title. And then I've got a video and I have another one back here just for legibility, which we'll look at in just a second. So to make that texture work, I need to select the title. Remember, this doesn't have to be a title. It could be another video or a graphic or a logo. It can be anything. And in my effects, I'm going to look for track matte key. Make sure that I pick the right video track, which is four. And I'm not using the alpha mat, I'm using the black and white image, which is the luminosity, and there you go. Now we've got that same effect, that grungy effect on that type. And I also have salvation in the next, next example here. Now I, I put this little, I call it a blip. If you want to do that, a great way to do that is to use the transform effect. 
And here I've set keyframes for position, scale, and rotation. And that's all that it's doing. It's just moving. And another little tip is if you move the mouse over the program window and use your scroll wheel, you'll advance ahead. I like this because it's, it's more random. So I'll set a keyframe for position, scale, and rotation, and then I'll just move ahead a little bit with my mouse, go back and just change those numbers to anything I want, slightly random, make, make it looking different that way. Then I'll move ahead, change the numbers, move ahead, change the numbers. The blurring that you're seeing here, and the reason I use transform is I'm changing the shutter angle and turning off use compensation shutter angle. This is a way to get motion blur on that effect. So now we've got grungy type. The cool thing is you can right click on this and save it as a preset, which I've done. So if I go back over to the first one and in my effects, I save this as blip. Now I've got blip boop, 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 on that one. And I love the fact that it's moving the texture with it. Because remember that grunge texture is on a completely different track. But the transform actually moves everything, including that, that uh, texture. If it didn't do this, then the texture would stay the same and the type would move like this. It would look really wrong. Here we want broken up type moving with that texture. Very, very cool. Now there's also the, the idea of legibility. This, this is why I have this lower video uh, in, in my timeline, to show you that sometimes it's hard to read this distress type. So one trick to do to, to fix this is to use brightness contrast or really any image effect. So if I add brightness and contrast, whoops, if I add brightness and contrast to the top to the grunge texture, then I can change how bright that grunge texture is. So remember in Photoshop, the darker something is, the more that it's hidden, the lighter it is, the more that you can see it. So if I add brightness to the grunge, then I'm gonna take the darkest darks and brighten them up and you'll see it's a little easier to see. The other one that I did in Photoshop, which was offset, and we also have this here. The benefit in, in Premiere Pro is that this is a live setting. So in Photoshop, you apply it and it's done. Here you can move it around and view this and leave it. So I can change that effect and position that wherever I want, up or down, depending on how that's breaking up the letter. And I could animate this too. I mean, could I have that as a, as a um, an animation moving along. There's my grunge type, either as an image with a layer mask, um, with a track mat, or as a type layer on its own. All right, there you go. By the way, all of the videos in this tutorial were supplied by Adobe Stock, the premier supplier of stock videos, images, illustrations, motion graphics, templates, and 3D objects. Find the perfect asset for your next creative project. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, come on, take a moment and subscribe, please, and join this amazing uh, bunch of people that we have here that we, we you notice all the comments, I answer all the comments, uh, I try to anyway. Uh, and uh, we have a, a good discussion here. If you really want to support us, then you can do what our PayPal donors are doing and support us through PayPal, one time or monthly donation. There's a link in the description and on the front of the channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of our wonderful PayPal donors. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to get your tight looking real grungy.